All right, so we all saw the uh, bail hearing didn't go well for Chile, total denial. Uh, but on top of that, I didn't think the motion had enough to it in order to warrant letting him out on bail and appeal. And here's where things get a little bit interesting. Michael Mee is showing up. A compilation of the record for Judge Levitt to look at. Because I heard Chile actually say how great Michael Mee is, what a nice guy he is, and all that, and real smart, the whole thing. But he didn't think that he did a good enough job representing him. And I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought I heard him say ineffective assistance of counsel. So by putting him on as a counsel of record for the appeal, well, I think you just undermine the idea that he has been an ineffective attorney, because why is his name now showing up as an appearance for the appellant. So here is your opportunity right now to make the record, to bolster your appeal. And you got to get the DA to say something that would be damaging to the conviction. And if you're the DA, you got to hold the line. And if you're the judge, you got to give it once again an affirmation of what you did. So let's see if that really happened here. Okay, so now let's get to where he very subtly and not so subtly throws Michael Mee under the bus. Made. I'm not saying Michael Mee made any mistakes. That's not my call here. Okay, I don't have all the facts. Significant constitutional issues. The court addressed it, but what I did notice is that this should have been really briefed beforehand on First Amendment issues, so the court could have had that. That's uh, no fault of, uh, I think it just should have been done beforehand. Okay, so who was supposed to brief the issues beforehand? Well, Chile, if he was supposed to be his own attorney, and Michael Mee, if he's now first chair again. And it looked to me, because of the standby stuff, it caused some mass confusion. And you put the lawyer in a bad position because he's not running the show anymore. You're telling him what to do when he's used to telling you what to do. And when you share command, there can be a breakdown. Michael Mee mentioned that it had been submitted to the judge the day before the trial. The people got it the morning of the trial. And here is one big issue for appeal. Why wasn't there a request for the judge to continue the sentencing hearing until after she's read the brief that was lodged with her and allow for additional briefing, allow for the people to respond with an opposition or a reply brief by the by Mr. Me, so that it could be more fully briefed, so the judge could then take it all in context with the trial. That didn't happen. She went straight to sentencing. Now, if there is a rule that says that she has discretion to eliminate that because of the lateness in the hour that you gave it to her, that's a problem. But if there's a rule that says in fairness that she needs to consider it, that's a problem again. I don't see those cases in this motion. I don't know why they couldn't just copied it and pasted it and just dumped it right in the motion to make it part of the record. And then look at the judge and say, Your Honor, I know we're here for bail only. I'm going to make an oral motion unless the people object, and they probably will, for the court to now consider the filings that were made a part of the uh, initial trial. So that we could have a chance to brief this. And if the judge, if your honor, if you're convinced that maybe the questions do side in my client's favor, that that could uh, help soften the situation here and allow us to have a, a more, uh, you know, a more beneficial hearing on letting him out. But right now she's not hearing it. She's just hearing the conclusory statement that there's constitutional issues. Also noticed that at time of sentencing, the state asked for a suspended sentence, but Mr. Castro just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. And I see reasonably agitated and irritated the court into causing uh, a sentence that is now six months. That's not true at all. See, now that to me was not the right thing to say. First of all, because it was wrong. The, 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 the judge was crystal clear because I'm basing my findings on the videotape. She didn't say, I'm adding time because of his bad behavior. This man, from what I can tell, Your Honor, has no prior felony convictions whatsoever. I'm doing that upon information and belief. I... That's a terrible statement to make. I'm doing that on information and belief. Your client is right there. You want to know the answer to whether or not he has a criminal record? You ask him. Chili, how many times have you been convicted? Uh, felony or misdemeanor? Let's start with misdemeanors. Never. Good. Oh, well, well, hold on. Have you ever been charged with any other crimes right now? Well, uh, yeah, I've got this one. I got this one, this one. And 
He just took over a murder trial, just got done with it. So how much does he know? Oh, I know the state could do that, but I don't see that he has any felony conviction. He's made his appearances, and I think... That's true. Now, that's a good point. Has, uh, ...is learning a very, very difficult lesson in life. I don't really think that's a good approach to take. He's, I think, 50 years old. There's a point where you learn these kinds of lessons. This guy's in a very tough spot. He's just walking in, and he's probably tired as hell. An appeal bond, Your Honor, so that the issue can be, uh, these issues can be properly raised. And so with that, Your Honor, I ask for... So he wants an appeal bond so that these issues can be raised. They could be raised while he's sitting in a jail cell. You haven't explained why having him out would actually help him. I venture to say, and I would submit to the court, that the six-month sentence that you impose isn't simply for his behavior um, in court or his behavior to your marshals. Okay, she made a big mistake there in terms of what she said because, again, the judge is now going to say, no, 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 I never sentenced him extra time because of his behavior. She's repeating it now. It did not happen that way. He was sentenced based on the videotape. She said that specifically. So this, is, this could just be nerves and the pressure or whatever, but it, take one away from her on that. That it is an appropriate sense um, placed upon the defendant by the court due to the charges and the evidence that you saw during the trial. Now those are conclusory statements, but she's just trying to protect the win right now. I don't think she wants to venture too far out. She already got the conviction. Uh, but he does have pretty consistent contact with law enforcement. He does have a warrant out of Ohio for a... Uh, no. I'm the other lawyer. If I didn't know that, I'm just grimacing inside because you are now springing stuff on her, the judge that I never had a chance to talk first about. And now I'm playing catch up. Trespass. And I understand that's a pinly misdemeanor, however, it's in honor status. Um, and he has a pending case in Las Vegas Justice Court um, for the very same offenses um, um, that the court heard um, during the trial uh, here. Okay, score another point for her there. The judge is going to mention there's actually two pending cases. But the point is, is that she's saying and the defense lawyer is not. So now he's playing catch up, score another point for her there. And uh, this shows pattern. And uh, she's making a very persuasive case that if you were to let him out, what would be the point? He's just going to get in trouble anyway. Uh, and he doesn't deserve to be let out early because he gets in trouble doing these things. That's preserving the win. And I did not hear anything to counter that. Um, as to the claim that, you know, hey, there were issues before trial, and there could have been First Amendment issues um, raised or briefed prior to, Your Honor, defense counsel was able to argue the First Amendment defense. Um, Your, Your Honor heard these arguments both during the trial and during closing arguments. Um, Mr. DeCastro, when he took the stand, raised them. Um, as a defense, but Your Honor held after listening to all of the evidence and applying the law, or uh, found him guilty. Um, regardless, this was not a First Amendment issue. The state stands by that. This was simply the defendant breaking the law. We cited is, uh, in fact, just discretionary to you to determine on appeal, pending appeal, whether uh, a bit of appeal bond can be issued. A little late bringing that one up because now you're basically eating crow. Yeah, I, I hear the state. I, I recognize that you found him guilty. I'm not trying to in any way argue that. On appeal, there are legitimate issues. This is conclusory statements. There are legitimate issues. Why don't you just say what the issue is? Is it proximity? Is it uh, you know invading the officer's space by a certain distance? Is it the utterance of certain words? Is it the plain language of the statute, which could be subjected to its own independent challenge? What are the issues? You keep saying the word issues. What are the issues that would make this case ripe for appeal? You're telling me, but you're not telling me. The court can see that, you know, there are some First Amendment issues just from watching the video. Things Never tell the judge what she can see. She's already ruled against you and found him guilty. You haven't shown her anything. Your motion does not have a single constitutional defense in it. Your motion does not attack the plain language of the statute at all. Your motion does not address any relevant Nevada authority that is independent from the Ninth Circuit that says these statutes are unconstitutional. Zilch. Given the fact that I think he really is contrite for, for what he's done. I disagree.
Okay, now here comes the body slam and the bench slap. Have you watched the videos that have been posted since he's been incarcerated? I have, I'm in a murder trial. Okay, so. Uh, the judge is being cool here. She understands he's got a, this, this, this lawyer is just trying to do the best he can under a very tough situation, so. Vegas Municipal Court. He has a case pending in Good Springs Justice Court where he continues to manufacture situations where he'll get arrested. Your Honor, I recognize that's what he was sort of doing for a living, and this. I'd like you guys to pay attention to that statement. I recognize this is the kind of thing he was doing for a living. Wasn't he saying on the stand that really his, uh, his main income was selling books and tapes as a constitutional law scholar. Is the lawyer saying something different here? Yes, Your Honor. I, I, I hear that. I, I won't have him speak at this time. But I will not have him speak at this time. That's a wise move, dude. Uh, <laughs> I would still ask you to consider that there may be legitimate issues. I think there are for Judge Levitt to consider. And I think there you go again, repeating yourself. There are legitimate issues. That's a conclusory statement. That doesn't say anything. Oh, well. I think these are sort of issues of first impression. That was the other thing I saw, is that in the state of Nevada, I can't find any case law that specifically talks about this filming of police officers. Okay, now he's getting more specific. I like this, but um, you need to mention some cases in my book here. You would say something like, I looked at the, you know, the, the Hibble decision. Uh, I forgot the name of the other case where it was officer obstruction, where the guy questioned the cop three or four times, uh, refused to comply with what the cop was saying. He was annoying the cop and the cop busted him. Those statutes said that that was constitutional. We have a different issue here because it's really not so much about his speech. It was his distance. That was more about speech. The Heibel case was more about officer safety, but here the police officer said there was no safety issues. So if there is no safety issues, then... You know, my question is, is looking at Heibel and extrapolating from it, you know, this statute as applied is unconstitutional. Love to be hearing that right now. Or any other Nevada cases you want to throw throw her way and give her the copies of the cases with your moving papers. I really, what I would say to the court is I recognize that it's obnoxious behavior. That's what it appears to be. Whether it's protected. Is a good choice of words. It is another thing that I think higher courts need to look at. But I can see. And that's well said. If the court has already made up, uh, the court's mad. Well, I, I want to be clear. I did not have a problem with him filming, and I said that when I sentenced him. That was not the issue. It was the safety issues that he created with his behavior. Okay, so now you've got her again. She's saying it directly. It wasn't his contempt nonsense that uh, created the sentence or added to the sentence. It was officer safety. So... Um, this is where you could say, you know, when you get a chance, you could ask the judge for permission to be heard again and say something along the lines of, you know, uh, the cop claimed he wasn't actually uh, threatened. And would, the, would your honor like to uh, see briefing on that? And we can replay the transcript. We have the rough transcript now. Maybe we can have another briefing, another hearing. But this poor guy, man, he's being pulled into a case that he doesn't really have, a, I don't think, all the details. He's I feel bad for him. No matter how great he is, he needs time to prepare, analyze, and think it out. And I also did not sentence him because of his ridiculous behavior in court. Um, that wasn't why I sentenced him to jail. I sentenced him because I found him guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Now look, she's got her notes here, and now she's going to reiterate very clearly on the record why he was convicted. This isn't changing the record. This is affirming the record. And I thought that was the appropriate sentence. I could have given him, given him 180 days on each count and ran it consecutive for a year in jail, but I didn't. I told you guys that's what a judge will do whenever you accuse her of bias. Remember I said that bias is a losing argument, and I said she gave midpoint sentences. That's exactly what she did. Um, and his behavior was un in unacceptable in court, but that's not what I sentenced him for. I did not sentence him for his behavior in court. I sentenced him for his behavior for the two charges that he faced. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so your motion is denied. Here are the Nevada appellate rules, fast track statement. I've already described all of that. And, uh, you know, the comes now. You know, I don't really like that expression, but whatever. Some people like doing that. That's This was a bare bones, skeletal motion. It's cited to one case. It, 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 you're not exactly enamored with the writing on this because 
you know, when you cite to statutes, you do not underline them. You don't put the year of the statute. With this excellent reputation, that sounds like salesman talk. I would not say that unless it's so stellar. Mr. DeCastro is regretful of his disrespectful behavior. A regret in my book is not an apology. I'm sorry you feel that way. And he hopes to correct his behavior. I think the guy's 50 years old, so I would not put language in there. There's a point where you move into adulthood and you accept responsibility for your behavior. Again, I know that the lawyer was really rushed. He was just getting done with a murder trial. So for all I know, he had an hour or two to work on this and not much sleep and a cup of coffee. And he's just trying to bang this out to get it filed. Okay, so again, I'm not faulting him. I invested in the community by starting several businesses. That's fine. I think uh, also he had a spelling error for J uh, Chili's name. Never really a good sign to do that. Obviously rushed. Very light on the cases. The DA said that this is actually inapplicable. This is pretrial release, not post-conviction relief. Judges are always worried about the gotcha. You just told me he had an excellent reputation. You didn't tell me about the two warrants. You didn't tell me about two similar cases in two different courthouses around here that he's being currently charged with. Why didn't you bring that up when you said he had an excellent reputation? Why wouldn't you want your fate tried by 12 people and a unanimous verdict by the way well there you have it uh, you know maybe everything i'm talking about here doesn't really matter because it'll all be addressed in the briefing schedule in front of judge levitt and maybe the mike me or this other lawyer or him doesn't want to disclose those cases yet to give the people too much time to research it give them less time under a very fast track briefing schedule that might very well be what's going on here and i'm off base you know they go fast track and the other side, I think only has what, 14 days or 21 days to respond. That's not a lot of time for a busy DA and then you hit them with all these cases and then you cause turmoil.